Thank you for joining us for our More to Life webinar with Annie and Muriel from Words That Heart. Annie and Muriel set up Words That Heart at the end of last year and they run these amazing sessions for the Childless Not By Choice community. I'm a huge fan of using creativity to help process life, grief, thoughts and everything. So I can't wait to hear more about how Annie and Muriel set up and set up this and guide their students through every step of writing for well-being. So Annie and Muriel, how are you both? I'm really good. Good, thanks. Good. Yes, very happy to be here. We're really pleased to have you as well, so thank you. Um, right, well, if you're both ready to start, I'll disappear and then I'll leave you both to it and I'll come back at the end to ask any questions that we might have had from anyone. Does that work? Right. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Lovely ladies. Okay, over to you then. Thank you. Hey, well, um, thank you um, so much to the Fertility Network and More to Life for inviting us and having us along this evening. Um, as said, we're really happy to be here. Um, so my name is Annie Kirby, um, and the format that we're going to follow today is so I'm just going to introduce myself and say a little bit about how writing has helped me um, in the, the process of healing from being childless, not by choice, and why I set up Words at Heart. Then I'll hand over to Marielle. Um, she'll talk a little bit about how writing has helped her, and um, she'll walk you through two um, writing activities um, that you can do. And you have a little bit of time to write here, so hopefully you've got a pen and paper or, or a device that you can use. Um, and then I'll come and finish up with a writing activity that you can and take away and do in your own time and then there'll be a little bit of time for questions if you have any um so um excuse me if i glance down it's just because i've got my notes here um oh i've lost my notes so i'm going to go freelance um so um i started writing um about 15 years ago taking it seriously um and um, I've published um, short stories, mainly fiction, um, and a little bit of work on um, childlessness and grief in the non-fiction area. And I also teach writing, um, mostly again, short stories um, and writing, teaching writing for well-being is a new venture for me, which I'm very excited about. Um, so um, I found writing to be so helpful for me in in helping me come to terms with being childless not by choice and help me to heal from that situation. Um, and that's why um, I wanted to set up Words at Heart so that um, other people who are in my situation could have that opportunity to, to start learning some, te some techniques to help writing for wellbeing. Um, and I applied to the Arts Council of England for some funding um, and um, I brought Marielle on board to help me as well. Um, for her expertise in writing and counselling um, and that and here we are um, didn't quite go to plan because we had planned to do all of our in-person workshops in March, April and May this year and obviously the pandemic has put a little bit of dent in that but um, we're coming back uh, with some online workshops um, and um, you know everything that we planned hopefully will still be able to happen if in a slightly different format. Um, so when, um, when I realised I wasn't going to become a mum um, I'm sure um, all of you will understand and, and, and have had similar experiences. That's a very, very difficult time for me. Um, and um, I couldn't write, to be honest, at that time. I couldn't even, I could barely read a book, let alone produce anything creative of my own. But eventually I started just jotting things down in my notebook at home, little bits and pieces about how I was feeling. Um, and I found that that helped me immensely. It wasn't for anybody else to read, it was just for me, but it helped me immensely in terms of getting the feelings out of me and untangled and, and making some sense of them on the page. Um, it was really, really incredibly helpful to me. Um, so um, as I kind of went on also, I could see other things in, in my writing that I didn't know that there were their sort of strengths and positivity um, and bits and pieces about my character that had got lost in all of that being washed over with grief for so long. So that's really um, why I wanted to, to be able to kind of move into the field of, of writing for wellbeing and to be able to share that because it was so helpful to me, not necessarily writing for anyone else to read, not necessarily trying to produce art, 
just writing for my own sense of well-being and helping me to come to terms with things. Um, one of the things I do want to say about the day is because of the format, because we're not interacting with you directly, because we're not there to support you in person, we are going to keep the writing activities that we do positive. Um, you know, we're not trying to 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 delve um, into kind of the depths of grief or anything like that today because this isn't an appropriate format. When we do our more structured workshops, we're able to go into things a little bit more in depth. But the writing activities that we're going to share with you today are quite general, they're quite positive. Um, if they work for you, that's fine. If they don't work for you, that's also fine. I think it's important to know that any response you have to these writing activities is fine. There's no right or wrong answer. And that includes actually not writing anything at all. If one of the activities doesn't work for you and you end up with a blank page, that's absolutely fine. And you might try the same activity on another day and write pages, or it might never work for you. And that's okay because we're all different and each person will respond differently to each activity. So, you know, if you find that the words aren't coming to the page today, please don't worry about that at all. It happens um, to me and I'm sure it happens to Muriel as well. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Muriel now. Um, I'm going to mute myself um, and Muriel's going to uh, talk a little bit about her experience of writing as well. Thanks Annie. Hi everybody. My name is Muriel Whale. I'm mentioning my surname because it becomes relevant later on. And I'm here because I'm childless not by choice. And because I'm a counsellor and a writer. I work mostly with people who are childless not by choice in my counselling and that's both online, well it's entirely online at the moment but at other times it's online and face to face. I tried to have children for seven years and although not being able to just about broke my heart, I was able to mend it again and writing has been a big part of that. I write fiction, I'm just coming to the end of a two-year course in creative writing which has been amazing, I'm very sorry that it's that it's finishing and um, I write blogs and I write for my own well-being and actually I would say that all the writing I do is for my own well-being whether that's fiction, blogs, writing letters to my friends, journaling, it's, it's all really good for me and last week I got an idea for a new novel and that's been a fantastic distraction um, to everything that's been going on in the world. So writing has helped me to do so many things to help me get things down on the page and in doing so get some perspective, get it out of my head and somewhere where I could look at it more objectively. Writing's helped me to enter other worlds. It's given me some power and agency when I felt in real life as if I didn't have any. Writing's helped me to make sense of the seemingly incomprehensible and contributed towards bringing an end to the disabling loneliness that I felt. When other people would say to me after one of my, after I've read one of my blogs or something that I've written, they say, you too, I thought I was the only one. Sharing my story helped me bring it down to a more manageable size and gave me the chance to experience it anew, but in a safer way. It gave me an outlet at the end of the day when I was overwhelmed and it helped me to build bridges between me and other people. And as I said a few minutes ago, in the last really difficult weeks that we've all been going through, I've gained comfort from beginning a new novel and immersing myself in the creation of characters and stories. So that's a little bit about why writing really matters to me and why I hope that some of the things we do today will be supportive and helpful for you. So we're going to move on now from the introductions into doing a very short, very simple writing exercise. And I've been thinking a lot recently about what animals can do for our well-being and many of us I think can get great comfort and joy from animals whether they're animals that we live with um, I've got my cat sitting next to me on the sofa which is really nice and um, giving me quite a lot of comfort having her there I hope she doesn't get up and start running around um, so it could be the animals that we live with it could be wild animals and um, that we see in our garden when we're out on our daily walk, or birds. So there's many of us who get a lot of support and inspiration from having creatures around us. Sometimes um, there's one particular animal or bird that we're drawn to, perhaps one that embodies qualities that we aspire to, 
or are noticing in ourselves more and more. And what we're going to be thinking about today is picking one animal that I'm calling a kind of totem animal. And my totem animal, and this is why I mentioned my surname earlier on, my totem animal is a whale. I share a name with them. And I'm very moved and inspired by their beauty, their power, and the way they relate to others of their tribe. So I'd like to invite you to think for a moment, if there's an animal that you are drawn to, perhaps one that you've always been drawn to, or that is a favourite of yours. This might be an animal that you have close daily contact with, like a pet cat or rabbit or dog, or the birds you feed in your garden or on your balcony. Or it might be an animal that you've never seen, but still feel a bond with. For a friend of mine, it's a wolf. For someone I once taught, it was a cheeky monkey. There's no right or wrong answer. And I would just invite you to think for a moment of what animal you feel drawn to. Just pick one. And try not to spend too much time deciding. Some possibilities include a bear, a bee, a butterfly, a cat, a dog, a dolphin, an eagle, an elephant, a horse, a lion, a mouse, an owl, a seal, a swan, a tiger or a zebra or whatever you think of. As I've said, absolutely no right or wrong answers. So just take a couple of seconds to reflect on which animal you might pick. Okay, once you have your animal or bird that you've chosen, consider which qualities it has that speak to you. What I'd like to invite you to do is make a list of three to five qualities that you perceive that this animal has got, or bird, or fish. Um, these could be qualities which our culture, or a different culture, perceives as being connected to those animals, such as busy bees or faithful dogs. Or it could be things that you've noticed yourself such as the gentle power that I see in whales. So just again, give, give you a few seconds to try and make a list of three to five qualities. And again, try not to think too hard about it. Just write down the first things that come into your mind. Obviously, keep writing while I'm talking if you're still doing it. When you have your list, you're ready to start writing a very, very short piece of work. I'm going to give you a possible formula. You can obviously completely ignore this and just write freely. There are definitely no rules, and it's important that you get what you want to out of this exercise. So if you wanted to use a simple formula, the first line would go, I am, or I am like, and then the animal that you've chosen. You can then, if you would like to, include a line describing your creature. Then three to five sentences where you give yourself the qualities that you've chosen for that creature using I am. And then the final line echoes the first. So hopefully you can see the slide and there's an example on there. And Annie also wrote an example, um, which I'm gonna read out because you can see mine on the screen. So Annie's is, I am a lioness, stealthy in the long grass. I am proud. I am fierce. I am nurturing. I can purr like a kitten. I can bite. I am a lioness. So what I'd like to invite you to do now is to have a go at doing your own totem animal piece of writing. Remember, like I said, please feel completely free to ignore the formula and just write whatever you like, to write some notes, or to just take five minutes out to listen and be quiet. Do feel free to message 
myself or Annie as well using the chat feature, particularly if we can help at all with this activity. So yeah, I'm just going to give you five minutes now to have a go. And if there's any questions or anything you want to ask, then just pop something in the chat box and you can address it to the panellists. And that means that only myself or Annie will be able to see it. Okay, enjoy. It's going to give you a couple more minutes in case you'd like a bit more time to do this activity. And I know that one person has already started typing something into the chat box that's an example of what they've written. We've got the first line so far. So that's great. So yeah, just a couple more minutes. lots of first lines coming up which is lovely oh we've got helen's whole one now which is brilliant thank you helen lots of examples popping up thanks everyone
Oh, it's lovely. There's someone saying that I see the best in everyone. I am a dog, which I think is absolutely true about dogs. Possible that you might need to, if you want just a panellist to see your writing, then you can pick that option. But if you want um, panellists and attendees, then there's an option for that. You can type it all in or as much or as, as much or as little as you like, whatever feels comfortable for you. As they sometimes, some people are saying they can't see other people's words. Um, but it may be that you can choose to put all panellists or all panellists and attendees, and that way more people will be able to see it. I think Helen's just done that now. Thanks, Helen. It's so lovely reading all these examples. Thank you, everyone. It's absolutely lovely. It's really inspiring to see what kind of things that people are putting. Oh, I'm a Siamese cat is popping out. Fantastic. I'm going to give it people a couple more minutes in case they want to put anything else in the chat box. Seen some beautiful things being put up so far. And then in a minute we'll move on to the next activity. I definitely agree with that about robins. I saw one the other day and I went for a walk on the path and it was there for a long time. Oh, that's lovely, Helen. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you so much for all those beautiful words that people have entered into the chat box. That was absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed reading those. Hopefully I'll be able to go back later on and read them much more slowly and give them much more of my attention because that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Right, we're going to move on to something slightly different. And this is a practice that you could, if you want, do every day or every other day or once a week, even though the prompts are the same. This is practice that you can repeat as often or as little as you like. And this is a practice that I've used a lot myself when things have been confusing and I've needed to use writing as a way of working things out for myself. But I really hope that you've enjoyed that last activity. Certainly the words that you were producing were absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I mentioned in my introduction the value for me in writing at the end of the day to reflect on and process what's been going on in my life. I'd like to share some ideas for daily journaling with you now. And as I said, I've used this as a daily practice, but it's really important to only do it when it feels right for you. And there's going to, you can see the prompts on the screen now. But choose the, when you're doing this, choose the prompts that work for you. You can say to yourself, if you're sitting here at the end of the day, trying to work things out, thinking about things, or at any time during the day, what do I need to answer right now? What prompt do I need to use right now and listen to your own wisdom because I think you will absolutely know which ones you need on that day and it could be different ones on different days or the same one but I think that yeah you will know what you need so it's really important to trust your own intuition when doing journaling because after all no one's going to read it it's for you and it's important to make it what you need it to be so never feel that you have to do all of them when you're doing anything like journaling do the ones that you feel are right. So these are some of the prompts that I found particularly useful. And again, I certainly didn't do all of them every day. I would use a selection of these. I know, I remember, I imagine, I want, I need, I am grateful for, I am, I am here for, and I feel. And usually I would do two or three of those in a day. And I asked um, 
I need to have a go at doing this for me. And she did both a short and a long version. And I think that's quite important because you can spend two or three minutes doing this, or you could spend half an hour, depending on what seems right for you. So some of the things that Annie wrote in the long version were, um, I know I am worthy. And then she went a bit more into her memory. I remember cleaning out the pond with my dad when I was little, catching the fish, taking out the plants, draining the water, cleaning the pump, the smell of the mud, the tangled weed. I remember how much my dad loved his fish. I found it a chore. I sulked. I would so love to be able to help him clean out the pond one more time. That's a very memory-based response to, I remember an old memory, but it could be things that you want to remember. Like I want to remember that I am strong. I want to remember that I have choices, for example. And another one that, that um, Annie prepared for us earlier is I imagine being able to fly over the rooftops and far away, swooping over streams and villages and little hamlets. When I dream of flying, I have no control, I crash into the ground, jolting myself awake. But when I take myself there in my imagination, I keep going up, up to the sun. Another example that Annie did for us in advance was, I'm grateful for the love I get from my dogs and cats. Different kinds of love, but both of the purest kind. It's lovely when we think of the animal exercise that we've just done. So again, we're just going to do a short practical activity. What I'd like to invite you to do now is looking at these prompts, choose a small number that you feel you would like to do right now. So perhaps two or three that you'd like to have a go at answering right now. And without thinking too much about it, again, this is just for you. This is not something that anybody else is going to read. So this is absolutely private for you. So without thinking too much about it, I'd like you to complete two or three of those sentences um, just for yourself, okay? And after you've done that, we're going to talk a bit more about some other ideas for journaling. And I'll put a link in the chat box of a site that I find useful to give me ideas. So yes, choose two or three or as many as feel right for you and just have a go. There's an example coming up. I'm just going to give you another couple of minutes just to 
complete any other of those sentences that you want. Okay, so hopefully that's given you all enough time to have a go at some of those prompts. And like I said, these are only here if you find them useful. It's very important to trust your own intuition, as I said earlier. Some other ideas for journaling that, again, could be done at any time, whenever the time feels right. I'm going to just read out a few. And if you've got any brilliant journaling activities that you've done or things that really helped you or websites that you've used to give you prompts do feel free to share those in the chat box as well so one thing that you could do is to write a love letter from yourself to yourself or from someone who you trust really likes and admires you exactly as you are sharing the things about yourself that you find really valuable it can often be quite liberating to try and see ourselves through others eyes think of somebody either who's in our life currently or who's been in our lives in the past and what they would say about us what positive qualities they would recognize in us that can be a nice activity to do another thing that can be quite supportive is if you've got really pervasive and persistent negative thoughts either about yourself or about the situation that you find yourself in to write these down on one side of a piece of paper and folding it in half straight down the middle and then on the other side see if you can think of something else that's as true or truer and this is an activity that i got from a writer and speaker called byron katie who i really like and it's a real challenge to think about something else that's as true or truer than these negative thoughts that we can sometimes have these unhelpful thoughts so that can be a really nice activity to do and it's important if you can to try and make sure that for each negative or difficult thought that you have that you find one thing to challenge that that's as true or truer another thing that i've always enjoyed doing is the highs and lows of every day sometimes it's easier to see the lows than the highs so again finding a piece of paper folding it down the middle or drawing a line down the middle and writing on one side the lows and on the other side the highs and again, aiming for a roughly equal amount can be really good. Sometimes when everything's just getting on top of me and I'm overwhelmed with things I've got to do and things that I'm thinking about and to-do lists, I do what I call a mind empty, where I get a piece of paper and I just write down everything that's on my mind. Literally, I just write it all down. I don't censor it. I don't make it neat. Um, often isn't because I'm often writing really fast. I just get it all down on paper. And either I just throw it away at that point, um, or if I think there's something useful, I go through it again, often with different coloured highlighter pens, and I sort it into things I can change, things I can't change right now, and I just need to leave, and things that I could address by meeting a need in myself. And I quite like having three different coloured highlighter pens for those things, or more than three. Um, just helps make what seems overwhelming into something a bit more manageable. Another letter-based 
activity is to write a letter saying goodbye to things in your life that you would like to let go of um, or thoughts or ideas that aren't serving you anymore and hello to things that you would like to welcome into your life. And I did share a link in the chat box for a site that I found particularly useful with 30 journaling prompts on it. And as I said, if you've got any good websites or journaling prompts that you've ever used in the past, please feel free to put them into the chat box. And also um, there will be time at the end of this webinar for you to ask some questions, either of Annie or myself. And if you want to start typing those in as well, you'll be able to see them at the end. So I've taken you through an activity about the qualities that animals might have. Oh, someone sent me a message brilliant. The three mind empty things were things you can change, things you can't change right now, and things you might need. And I'll type those into the chat box as well. Yes, yeah, so I've taken you through several different activities. I really hope that some of these are going to prove useful for you. And I'm going to hand over to Annie, who's going to talk about um, an exercise that you can try later on or when you're out on your daily walk. But yeah, please do type us any questions that you have. Hi, um, thank you, Marielle, for that. Um, so I've got my notes back, which is a very good thing because I don't like to freestyle. I like to be able to look at my notes and make sure I've covered everything. So if you see me glancing down, I'm just making sure that I've said everything that I planned to say. Um, so this final activity um, is one for you to take away and do in your own time. Um, and I will talk you through it, share an example. Uh, and what would be nice to do today would be to link an activity to uh, the daily socially distanced walk that so many of us are doing at the moment in, in these strange times that we're living in. Um, so I wanted to, to share an activity that you can particularly link to your walk, um, although please do obey all of the current rules on exercising and social distancing. Um, so I like to call this exercise sensory walking. Um, and in its simplest format, it just means paying more attention to the present moment um, both in the world around you and also in your thoughts and feelings while you're taking your daily walk. Um, so if you're anything like me, um, I'm the kind of person that can get lost in my thoughts and feelings. Um, you know, I can walk for an hour and not really notice where I've been um, or what's around me because I've been thinking about something. Um, so you can become a bit distanced from the physical world around you and also a little bit uh, of a disconnect between the way in which your thoughts and feelings might drive your behaviours and emotions. Um, so this is a, an exercise that can help with that and I found it very useful. So the example that I'm going to use, um, when I go on my daily walk at the moment, I often notice all of the rainbows in the windows of the houses in my street um, drawn by the children that live there. So that makes me feel a little bit sad because I don't have a rainbow in my window um, and I'm the kind of person that might think about that for my whole walk um, and then come home not feeling refreshed and energized from my walk not really having taken in my surroundings and you know maybe I'll just slump in front of Netflix or eat chocolate or ice cream or all three um, just as a response to having felt sad because I saw all the rainbows in in the windows um, so um, this exercise kind of helps me not to do that. Um, so what I would do on my walk is try and notice in the moment everything that's going on around me. Um, and that includes my emotions as well. So um, if I move on to the next slide, um, if you think about all of the senses, um, you think about what you can see as you move through the different moments of your walk. So that could be the different greens of the trees, colours of front doors, if you're on the beach perhaps the sand or the rippling waves, uh, sunset or sunrise if you're an early bird, uh, maybe what the 
the clouds in the sky look like, other people or animals that you might see, uh, flowers and plants, even the patchwork of tarmac on the pavement um, or the sun glinting on parked cars. So it will be very different depending on where, where you are when you go for your walk. Um, what can you hear? Uh, the drone of traffic, bird song, dogs barking maybe, um, the sound that your shoes make as you step across the ground. Um, and does this change as you, as you move through your walk? Uh, what can you smell? Um, maybe tarmac melting on a hot day or the smell of rain on earth or the smell of trees in the forest or traffic fumes again, um, which is always a feature at the beginning of my walks because I have to cross the main road. Um, and also what can you feel or touch um, and the sensations of things um, such as maybe the sun hitting your neck or the breeze in your hair or what the ground beneath your feet feels like, maybe stones are poking through your shoes. Um, if you use a mobility aid for example, how does that feel in your hands or when you move from one surface to another? Is there pollen? Is it making you sneeze? Is it making your eyes itch? Um, what can you taste, if anything? Um, you might be chewing gum or you might have cleaned your teeth or brushed your teeth and be able to taste that or you might be able to taste things in the environment like traffic fumes perhaps um, or you might taste nothing on your walk because it's it's kind of less there um, it's kind of less of a feature of most walks than, than what you can see and, and hear obviously um, and finally as you move through the moments of your walk noticing all of these things um, if you find that you're experiencing an emotion that's absolutely fine and absolutely natural just acknowledge the emotion that you're feeling in that moment without judgment um, try not to let it crowd out the physical world that you're experiencing as well on all of those sensory details but yes feel the emotion that you're feeling acknowledge that emotion and move to the next moment of your walk so um, what you don't need to do is take any notes or take photographs or anything like that. Just um, whatever you remember is fine and you may not remember everything. If you don't experience something on your walk, if you don't taste anything, if you don't smell anything, that's fine, that's not a problem. Um, and depending on how long your walk is, you might decide to choose um, or where you walk you might decide to choose to focus on a particular sense so you might do a walk where you just focus on what you can hear or what you can see and smell it's up to you um, you can pick two or three senses or you can pick all of them or you can just choose what catches your eye or your ear as you're on your walk um, any way you want to do it is absolutely fine so um, the next part of this exercise um, is what you do when you get home um, and it's when you would reflect on the walk and what you saw and heard and smelt and felt and so on um, and we do this reflection by writing so one very simple way of doing this is to write a list of poem um, so don't be alarmed by the word poem if you're not a poet i'm not a poet um, literally um, it literally does exactly what it says in the tin you can write a list of all the sights and smells and sounds and, and everything that you experience during each moment of your walk you can write single words or fragments or sentences whatever comes to mind you can play once you've written all of that down you can play around with the order if you want to um, you can edit if you want to, but actually you don't really have to do that. The beauty of this exercise is that your list will become a poem by itself. It's, it's kind of like a self-generating poem because you've done all the work while you were out on your walk. Now you're just jotting it down. Um, if you prefer to write some prose, you can take that option as well. You can just set your timer for three minutes or five minutes. Um, and just uh, put pen to paper and, and write organically about what you experience on the walk and see what happens. Um, so here's, I'm going to sh share an example from a recent walk I took. So just for context, I live near a harbour once I've crossed the main road and got past the traffic fumes. I live near a harbour, um, 
and it's you know it's quite pretty and, and there are boats and things like this um and this is the the list poem that i came up with um to fit it on the uh, slide instead of using a carriage turn i've used slashes between lines but you can you don't have to do that it looks quite pretty but you don't have to do that you can just literally do the line carriage return next line um i couldn't do it like that because it wouldn't fit on the slide um, so here is the poem I came up with, um, rainbows in windows make me feel sad, white blossom on a tree, clouds heavy with rain, sun on my face, wind on my neck, single raindrop splashes on the back of my hand, the sun again, seaweed and salt, I breathe in the salt waves lapping, I breathe with the waves, calm, purple sky, crunching pebbles beneath my feet, rust and age, wooden boats in a row, yellow, lemon, pink, blue, cream, a different sort of rainbow. Um, so that literally was me just making a list of everything I saw um, a couple of emotions that I experienced on that walk um, and I could have stopped actually at the second to last line yellow lemon pink blue cream um, but because I'm a reflective kind of person I decided to link it back to the first line with the, the different colours that were in the in the rainbows on the windows of the houses I was parking, passing um, compared to the the rainbow boats that were, were all in a row but you don't have to do that. It depends on what kind of writer you are. You can do that if you want and add a, add a last line of reflection, um, but you absolutely do not have to do that. All you do is take everything that you remember from the walk and make a list and there you have a poem. And hopefully um, each walk you take will be different every day, even if you walk in the same place because the environment around you will be changing, but also you will be changing as well. Uh, we're all different on different days. Um, so I hope that's like an exercise that you can take with you um, and see what comes out of it. That was really lovely, Annie. It made me think of a walk Thank you. I took the other day. Um, I live quite near to a river, which is amazing. And um, I was walking down by the river and it was flowing very strongly in one direction. Um, it's a tidal river, so it weirdly does flow in two directions. And I suddenly had this real insight that if I just stopped struggling and went more with the flow of my life, then things would be so much easier. So I think things in nature can give us real um, insights if we're in that kind of open and reflective mood. Yeah, so thank you very absolutely. Much. Um, and just, you know, just to me, it helps me empty my mind of of whatever rubbish is going on in there. That's why I really like that exercise. Thank you. And there were some really lovely um, comments coming from some of the participants about that. Yeah, um, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. That was really, it was, wasn't was what I was expecting, but it was so much better than I was expecting. So much easier to be able to join in and find yourself being creative. So I hope everybody else felt like that as well. Um, if you've if you've got any questions, then please do drop them in the box. I see that um, we have got a question, um, um, so I'm going to go to that in a minute. But I'd just like to invite you just to tell the group a bit about what your sessions are that you're running online. So as I mentioned, um, we had planned to run some in-person workshops in March, April and May. Um, and um, obviously the pandemic is a little bit of the dent in those plans but we've been working really hard to redesign the workshop so that we can bring them safely online um, so they would be a little bit more intimate than a webinar because everybody would have their screens uh, their video and their microphones on so as, as close as we can get to sitting around a table it would be private not recorded um, and enable us to go a sort of a bit more deeply um, into to potentially issues around child assist and have a bit more of a structured session. Um, so we've taken those sessions online um, and we'll be releasing the dates for those at the end of this week. So 
uh, the free of charge as well. Um, thank you to the to the Arts Council of England for, for that. Um, so if you want to go to our website, which is www.wordsatheart.co.uk, uh, you can scroll down to the bottom of any page and register for our mailing list and we can update you on the dates. Or you can just send us an email um, and we're at wordsatheart at gmail.com. Um, just send us an email and we'll let you know the dates when they're available for booking. That's brilliant. Thank you. And we'll yeah. share them on our social channels as well. So. Thank you. Um, and then the question was, do you know of any sites or books about writing about childlessness, as I'd like to explore my journey through writing? Shall I, shall I start, Annie? And then yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a um, message back to say that if people do want some links to drop us an email, um, but there are so many amazing bloggers writing about their childlessness journeys. And I think that's a really brilliant place to start. And, and if you're inspired by any of those bloggers, then using their format to write your own journey would be absolutely brilliant. Um, so have a look at some of the blogs. And, and as I say, we can, um, if you email us, we can share some of our top childlessness blogs with you and use those as information as a starting point. In terms of books about writing for childlessness, I don't think there are any yet, um, but that's given me quite an exciting idea. So <laughs> watch this space. Um, and yeah, maybe there's, a, you know, maybe there's a future opportunity there for someone to write a book about well, writing for wellbeing for childlessness. There are also some really fantastic biographies. Um, Jessica Hepburn has written some amazing books. Um, I think she's about to climb Everest when um, lockdown is, is finished. So that would be uh, that's going to be something quite exciting for her to write about. But yeah, we will. Um, I'm sure Annie might have some suggestions as well. But we can definitely follow up, follow this up with an email if you email us. Um, so, so I, I don't think there are any books um, specifically about writing and childlessness. Um, and maybe, maybe we do need to write that. Um, on our website, we do have a few writing exercises, um, and we also did uh, our own webinar earlier this year, which has a link to on our website, which has some different exercises that you can follow as well. Um, and uh, Mariel can't say this, but I can. Mariel has a, is a brilliant blogger and blogs about childlessness, um, and um, that's on her um, counselling website. Um, which uh, we have links to from our website, but I, I really strongly recommend Mariel's blog, actually. And to be honest, her, reading her blog was what made me want to bring her on board with words of heart to help me with this. Thanks, Annie. No, that's really lovely. Um, so yeah, there were a couple of other questions. One was, um, I think you did answer at the beginning, just was, um, did childlessness lead you to writing or would you have done it anyway? I know you covered that a little bit at the beginning. Um, I, don't, I don't mind just kind of recapping. So I was already writing um, and then childlessness made me very sad and I didn't write at all. And then um, just jotting bits and pieces down in my journal for private use um, just helped me really get back to writing. Um, so um, so it, it's been a bumpy journey, but, um, you know, thankfully the, the writing mojo is back. Mm -hmm. um, and Mary was slightly different for you, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I used to write a lot as a child. Um, I wrote a very a terrible novel when I was about 13 and I wrote lots of short stories and poems and I was always writing. Um, and then I stopped completely for many, many years and threw myself into other things, including work. And then um, a few years ago, there was a call went out in the town where I live for people to write short stories about themselves, autobiographical fiction. Um, so I wrote a very, very, it was all flash fiction. I wrote a very short piece of flash fiction about my childlessness experience, or one very small aspect of it. And it was, um, it was published in the anthology, which was really exciting. And that's got me back into writing and led to me doing the creative writing course that I've been doing and writing, having nearly finished my first novel. Um, 
So, yeah, my, for me, it was that short story about my childlessness that led directly to all the writing that I'm doing now. Gosh, that's um, really amazing. So and that you, did lead you to it then? Yes, yeah, it led me, it led me back to it. Um, I, that piece of writing, sorry, that piece of writing is on our website as well, if so anybody yes, would like book. to read it. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'll share that tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, do you think it's worth worrying about grammar? Is it worth doing a course in it? Depends what you're writing for. It's definitely not, you definitely don't need to worry about grammar for writing for well-being. Absolutely not. Just put it out there. It's just about, it's just about writing for yourself. Um, and so I would say no, absolutely. If you want to, if you want to write a novel, then that's, that would be slightly different, but certainly not for well-being writing. If it's, oh, Helen's just said for reading for others. Well, do you know what? Yes and no. I think we live in a world now where the way we use words has really changed. And I think it's more important for people to have a voice and to get their voice heard in their writing. So I, I, I personally would say, no, don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. And I think, you know, if, if you do want other people to read your writing, um, you can always hire someone to help you with the grammar side of it. There are lots of people out there who provide that service. I'm not saying you shouldn't take a course on grammar, but I don't think it's necessary um, to be a good writer, to be good at grammar at all. Yeah, there are some, some fantastic pieces of software as well, one called Grammarly, which is the basic is free and it will correct lots of stuff for you. So, And also I think it gives personality to writing when perhaps the grammar's not perfect. So, the, the voice is the most important thing. I think somebody asked earlier on, where did words that heart come from? And I wonder if you want to answer that, Annie, because I think that was your idea. Um, yes, it was. And it's not talking about grammar. It's not very grammatical. Um, it's really it, came, it came from um, often, um, as childless, not by choice people, often people can say really hurtful things to us um, and their words can really hurt us. And I just wanted to switch that around, turn it around and turn that phrase into something positive. Um, so I, I guess it's a way of saying that words, yes, other people's words can hurt us, but our own words can heal us. Um, and I guess I could have called it words that heal, but I liked art better. Um, and, I, you know, I've been waiting for people to send me messages about the appalling grammar of that. But that's, that's a question. The grammar doesn't matter, I don't think what it means matters more. Absolutely. I That's totally lovely agree. Totally agree. Well, thank you so much, ladies. And just thank you for sharing these exercises with us this, this evening. Um, I'll be sharing the uh, your details on your website and everything on social again. So if anyone wants any more information, make sure you get in touch with me or Annie or Muriel. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for this evening. Uh, Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you to the um, Fertility Network for giving us the opportunity to do this webinar. Oh, not at all. Thank you thank to you. all of you for just being so brilliant and having a go at all these things that we've done today. And I hope that this will lead you on to doing more writing for wellbeing. And I say, do get in touch with us if we can help at all. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for, um, you know, sending us um, all your messages and, and sharing us things that sharing with us what you've written as well through the messages. Thank you. Loved reading them. Yes, lovely. I just wish I had more time to read them. Hopefully, um, I don't know if we can somehow save the chat. So that I'll we see can... if I can export it. Yeah. yeah all right. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.